I'll let Kim respond to that. It's all right, you know. Ms. Hartman, it's not a matter of uh, necessarily savings. One of the primary reasons we do this, it's a matter of the, the timing of when we have to, to pay bills versus the timing of when we will get the majority of our taxes. And so in essence, salaries we pay every couple of weeks. We have other bills, health insurance, that we have to pay every every month. And the majority, significant majority of our revenues come in in January, the middle of January once, to be quite frank with you, once the uh, taxes are paid for BC summer. So from July up until January, our savings are being reduced in terms of cash up until that time in order to pay the bills then we have to borrow money but when the taxes come in we turn right around and just pay that off so it's not a matter of just savings it's just the timing of when we have to pay bills versus when we receive our tax revenues and my thought was is um why can't we take it out of savings save the interest from that to not do that and then pay the savings back put it back after we start getting our money back and that's what I'm saying. We, we have savings at the beginning of the year, but those savings dwindle because we're paying bills. And then once January hits, well, actually, in, in this case, probably around November, we'll reach the point at which we have exhausted our savings. That will be replenished then in January once the majority of our tax revenues come in. And we also have enough to then also repay the money that we've borrowed. I guess I'm referring to, I'm trying to think of the name of the, where we had made reference to getting to a certain level. I know they don't call it savings, but I can't think of what it's called. The, the, fund, the fund balance. Yes, sir. And, and that's what I'm referring to. We do use our fund balance technically from July on through January. It's just that because we still have continuing bills that we have to pay, we utilize that and any revenues we receive, and as a result, we still have to borrow money in order to just continue to pay those bills on a regular basis until January. So, so, so Ms. Hoffman, your, your question is, will the fund balance be enough to ensure that we have enough revenue to take care of our obligations? And, and Kevin is, is suggesting that, no, it would not be. And, and what I'll tell you is, there's nothing worse than not having money to make people. Okay, I mean, you can do a lot of things in the school district, but when it's time for folks to receive their checks, you need to ensure that you have resources available. And so this gives us a fail-safe method to, to ensure that until tax revenues come in in January, that we can meet all of our financial obligations. Um, I was thinking that we had to have, or not had to have, but they always suggested to have so many months put back into this fund balance. To, um, to sustain us. And so that's why I'm asking that question. But again, naturally, you borrow money, you have to pay interest on that money. So, anyway, thank you. Mr. Robinson, along those lines, do you have any idea what the interest rate on this would be approximately? I, it's very low. I, if I had to guess, I'd say less than 2%. We're in a program. Um, Fortunately for us, with other school districts, in which the number one, the cost to borrow is lower because we're con in a combined program with other school districts. So, the other fees, legal fees for them to review, all of that's lower. But also, our funds are invested until the time we withdraw the funds. So that actually reduces the cost of any normal normal borrowing. So if we went to a bank and borrowed, we would only be paying interest in this program. Until we draw the funds, we actually earn interest on the funds, and then once the funds have been drawn, then we're paying interest. So that also lowers the cost, the total cost to borrow. And, and, and I, I'd like to make note of what Mr. Robinson said, that we are part of a program that includes multiple school districts. So this is something consistently that happens across the state of South Carolina, since most districts don't receive their tax revenues until January. Uh, and therefore need revenues to sustain themselves up until tax, uh, tax revenues come in. Um, so this isn't long-term debt. This is we are receiving revenue until tax revenues come in in January that we pay it off uh, and are debt, debt free. Thank you. Of course.
course, consistently I have over the last seven years asked them, we're not going to be able to do this, but I, I do understand from a cash flow standpoint, but I, 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 I would hope one day, aspirationally, but, uh, but it is, I'm afraid, a, a necessary evil, so to speak. Uh, any other questions, issues, concern on the TAM? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the tax, and tax anticipation note uh, not to exceed 5.9 million. Uh, indicate by raising your right hand. 7 0. Thank you. The third item this evening is the third reading of the fiscal year 1920 operational budget, and the superintendent is recommending board approval to the third reading of the fiscal year 1920 budget in the amount of $45,265,101 and approval of the attached budget resolution to be sent to the county which authorizes operational millage of 203.1 mills. Thank you, Chair. I entertain a motion uh, regarding third reading of the budget. Mr. Chair. I make the motion we accept the superintendent recommendation to approve the third reading of the fiscal year 1920 budget in the amount of 45265101 and approval of the attached budget resolution to be sent to the county with author authorized operational millage of two, uh, 203.1 million. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion by Ms. Harrison has been seconded by. Mr. Miller to approve third and final reading of the FY1920 budget. Uh, any discussion on the budget? So, um, yes, ma'am. I'd like to know how much that we spend um, spent last year, and I guess if do we budget a certain amount for these clubs, uh, groups, and committees that, uh, and clubs that we have, like the Bow Tie Club, the Elite Ladies, or any other. Club. Yeah, so so Ms. Hartman, so those two clubs in particular, uh, those clubs are funded out of the superintendent's account, so we don't have a line item specific for both our clubs and uh, uh, Those mentoring initiatives are funded through the superintendent's office. So when they're <clears throat> when they're funded through that, when they go on trips, are they approved? Um, don't we still have to approve if they go go out of state? If you want to say yes. Okay. Um, the didn't the Bowtie Club go to uh, Churchill Downs? Yes. When was that approved? I, I need to check, Ms. Hoffman. I mean, normally we submit that at the beginning of the year. If we didn't, that would have been an oversight on my part. Uh, but generally, we submit uh, Bowtie Club trips. We, we do an annual trip every year. Uh, we generally do that at the beginning of the year when all the but I have to go back and look to verify. And it very well could have been an oversight. We're waiting the initial approval, but I have to look back and see. Can you update me possibly on, is it all out of state? Or is it in state have to be approved by the board? Yeah. So, is the out of state? Yeah, so, so what, the, what, what the old policy is, Ms. Hartman, is any overnight field trip or field trip outside of South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia has to be approved by the board. So if we take a trip from, uh, from, from Winsboro to Atlanta, Georgia, and return back the same day, that does not need board approval. Okay. So if it is a uh, overnight trip to Atlanta, Georgia, that would need board approval. So is any overnight field trip or any field trip outside the state of North Carolina, sorry, South Carolina, Georgia? Less than a month away, as far as the Italy trip for the um, chorus. Yes. Um, have we approved that? Yes, I mean, we approved that several several months ago. Okay. How many people are going? How many students are going on that trip? Twenty. Um, I'm almost sure it's twenty this evening, but yeah, twenty students. Do you know how many adults? I, I can't remember. I think five or six adults off the top of my head. What's the board policy on board members going? 
I understand that Sylvia Harrison's going to support them. Uh, what, what, what do you mean board policy about that? We have both board policy as far as what the board, um, when they go to a trip like this, that's to just support the, the students. There, there is no board policy. So if, if Ms. Harrison or any other chaperone were to attend the trip, I mean, board members would be no different. Okay, so so we don't have to approve that, that she's going for, and we're spending $600 for that trip. Ms. Harmon, just like we didn't approve to you to go to the uh, finance uh, conference no, that at the beach. something to learn something. This is supporting the students. Yes, ma'am, and other folks have gone on, on trips to support the students. Uh, well, that's why I'm asking, do we have a policy? It doesn't specifically address that, and Ms. Hartman asked me, I mean, uh, Ms. Harrison asked me about that, and what it's paying for is the per diem amount, and I approve that. Well, I would think it should come to the board. Thank you. Um, Just make sure you ask me when you want to go to Myrtle Beach for a finance conference, then, Ms. Hartman. Well, these are finance. This is something that we all are learning from. It was a finance conference. professionals conference. It was not a school board conference, well, Ms. Hartman. still something that to learn about the budget. I went to Las Vegas, Ms. Harper. Did you go to Las Vegas? And I'm assuming it's the same thing as far as that, that it's been approved as far as the, the Disney, Disney World and the cohort groups. What, what, what trip are you referring to, Clark? The Disney, Disney World trips and the, the cohort, which went to Paris, right? Yes. Those were all approved? Yes, they were. Trips that have already occurred? Yes, sir. For this year. Yeah, so I mean, it depends on what trip you're referring to. What, what trip are you asking about? Um, you said as far as uh, going to um, Churchill Downs, you said that was paid out of the um, your, your account. Yes. How much was paid out of that? I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, Ms. Hardy. You can't guess? No, I don't want to guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah, can you yeah, update yeah, next board meeting? I'll be happy to share that with you. As a matter of fact, while we're on that, let me talk about that. That was an absolutely wonderful experience for our young people. The opportunity to visit, uh, to visit Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, they had an opportunity to visit the Muhammad Ali Museum. They had an opportunity to visit the Louisville Slugger Museum. Uh, and an opportunity to visit Churchill Downs. Uh, and this is an absolutely ideal way to use district resources and to expose our young people. Uh, they, they saw some things, many of those young people, that they otherwise would not have seen. Um, experienced some things that they otherwise would not have experienced. Uh, so if there's any suggestion that maybe this is not worth the investment, uh, I'd be the first to say this is absolutely worth the investment. And if we aren't investing in our young people, then I'm not sure what our purpose will be. What about the kids that aren't able to go to these groups? A a anyone is eligible. The Bowtie Club is eligible for any student in grades 6 through 12. No, 7 through 12. They're not in a group. They don't have the same opportunities that these groups would have. Okay. <laughs> so you, if, if you want to participate in the activities of, that these groups are participating in, then you can join one of the groups. Well, I agree. That's yeah, I mean, so, so it's, it's not exclusionary. I mean, it's open to any student. Well, I understand that. Now, my, my family's from Louisville, Kentucky, but I haven't had the opportunity to go to a whole races at Churchill Downs. And I go there. Do, do, I do you have any further folks, questions? Both sides of the family. Ms. Hart, thank you. Can, can we see if other folks have questions as you go through your list? Mr. Yes. Chair. Yes, I went to Carnegie Hall, and my trip was paid for by me. Um, and I know you're saying that, so your Mr. Smith can write it in the paper. My trip to Italy is paid out of my pocket. Wow. Wow. When we went to Myrtle Beach, where all the boys stayed in a regular hotel, did you tell Mr. Smith you stayed in a hotel cost five hundred dollars a night? Did you tell that? Don't worry about where I'm going because my trips are paid for out of my pocket. 
You didn't say anything when I went to Carnegie Hall. But you're so busy worrying about what the boys do or worry about these kids. When did you go to the schools? When did you participate? Did you donate any money to any of these groups that's going on these trips? You don't do nothing. Nothing. You're right. All right. All right. Any other board members have anything on that? So are you saying that this particular thing that you're paying for? I think we covered it. Don't worry about what I'm doing. I was just trying to clarify what she's saying now. I owe you no explanation. We this discussion. And I don't owe you one either. You owe me one. All right, Mr. Chair, I call for the question. Thank you, sir. All those in favor of approving the budget indicate by raising your right hand. That's six. Uh, in favor? Negative? Thank you, ma'am. Human resources. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. For your approval this evening under human resources, you have item one, which is a sabbatical leave request. Actually, that is for your consideration. Thank you. Um, and, and this was a matter that was discussed in executive session. Uh, it is a personnel matter, um, so we, we cannot discuss it, uh, but uh, we do have to take action on it. So at this time, the chair will entertain a motion regarding the request for a sabbatical. Motion to approve the Superintendent recommends the board approve certified resignations and terminations for current staff members who will not return after the conclusion of the 2018 academic year. This is presented to you in Exhibit 2. Thank you. This time, Chair, entertain a motion in regard to certified recommendations in Exhibit 2. We approve the certified resignation terminations of current staff members who will not return after the conclusion of the 2018-2019 academic year in Exhibit 2. Thank you, ma'am. Second. Thanks. So a motion by Ms. Harrison has been seconded by Mr. Miller to approve certified resignation terminations in Exhibit 2. Again, personnel items, uh, no discussion. All those in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. 7-0. Thank you. Next, certified administrative recommendations. The superintendent recommends the board approve certified administrators for academic year 2019-20. Thank you, Chair. We're going to entertain a motion with regard to certified administrators in Exhibit 3. Mr. Chair, yes, I make a motion we accept the superintendent recommendation approval of certified administrators for academic year 2019-20. What's wrong? Thank you. It's been motioned by Ms. Harrison. It's been seconded by, I believe, was that Mr. Davis? Uh, Mr. Davis on the second on that to approve certified administrative um, professionals in Exhibit 3. Again, uh, personnel item no discussion. All those in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. 7-0. Thank you. And lastly, certified recommendations in Exhibit 4. The superintendent recommends board approve certified professional educators for academic year 2019-20. Mr. Chair, yes, ma'am. I make a motion we accept the superintendent approval of certified professional educators for the academic year 2019-20, Exhibit Four. Superintendent, I think we got it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I, I second. Thank you, sir. It's been motioned by Ms. Harrison. It's been seconded by uh, Pastor Jackson to approve certified recommendations in Exhibit Four. Again, personnel item, no discussion. All those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. That's six. Ms. Hartman, are you? Sorry. <clears throat> this is a certification. Certified. 
Certified recommendation, exhibit four. Is that is that affirmative? Okay, so seven zero. Thank you, ma'am. All right, that gets us down to me. Um, as you all know, we have graduation coming up on Saturday morning. Um, are we still on the football field as far as we know, or are they going to move us to the gym? Right now, we're still on the field. I mean, I want to see some rain, but I'd like to be on that football field. Yeah. Well, only if it rains, Ms. Hoffman. We're hoping that the rain holds off. Send one up, fellas. I'm gonna send one up. All right, all right. I won't, I won't get this clarified because last year we talked about it. Then I wore my jacket, and y'all gave me mess because I wore my jacket. What, do, do we want to wear jackets, or what, what are we gonna wear? Mine doesn't fit, so I'm just saying. I might have that problem too, Miss Hartman. I don't know. I haven't pulled it out. Mine never It's up to y'all. Whatever we want to do. Okay. Um. I think we wear what we want to wear. Do you have any idea how many graduates we've got? It's about 170. A little smaller than last year. Last year was about 205. This year about 170. About 170. So, I mean, last year was probably the biggest since I've been on. It was the biggest since I've been on. The other ones, I think, were, I think 170 is higher than what those other years were. Uh -huh. It's still a good amount, I thought. Uh, and, and this great. year's right, the ninth grade class is probably.